to talk about, talk about finite notations type in presence of coefficients. Please. Yeah, okay. So uh, first of course, I want to thank organizers for inviting me and for uh, making this uh, very nice meeting. I mean, we just started, but it is already nice. Uh, next, I'm not the first speaker of the conference, but still I think I should say a couple of words about the current situation because of, I mean, I have Russian origins. So yeah, uh, and uh, as someone who uh, came initially from Russia, I want to say that, uh, I mean, uh, many of us, I cannot say all of us, many of us are supporting U uh, Ukraine, but we don't know how to do it actively or, or how to really help. And I mean, we, we wish, but we, uh, we are not very helpful maybe in this situation. So what's going on is, uh, really terrible and it's terrible for Ukraine and also terrible for Russia. It's just suicidal, I think. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I, I cannot, uh, I should probably uh, stop speaking about that and start speaking about Mars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, I will speak about uh, uh, my joint work with Pavel Tomarkin. It's uh, about, uh, quiver mutation, but uh, there, there is nothing super on it. So uh, just uh, quiver mutation with coefficient. And uh, uh, it will be more or less the same talk uh, as I gave in Newton Institute half a year ago. So uh, now I need to, how, how do I, how, how do I, ah, okay, how, uh, how do I, it sort of doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah. So um, uh, yeah. Uh, now thank you. Yeah. So uh, I take a usual notion notion of quiver and uh, a usual notion of, of quiver uh, without loops and without two cycles as usually, and with usual rule of mutations, uh, which we have just seen in the previous talk. And I ask myself when is this quiver mutation finite? So I start to mutate it in all possible directions uh, and uh, ask when I can only obtain finitely many quivers by these mutations. And uh, one can think that the uh, question is answered many years ago, but apparently as Sergei Fomin pointed to us, we only know use this question as the answer for the case when the quiver has no frozen variables. So like when you are really allowed to mutate in all possible directions and there are no uh, ice variable which you frozen and you are not allowed to touch. Uh, and so in this work, we try to also include frozen quivers with frozen, uh, with frozen vertices. Uh, yeah, so we take what is the answer? No, no yeah. it, it will come in a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, to take uh, any quiver with uh, any number of frozen variables and allow uh, ourselves only to mutate in these black things, but not to touch blue ones. And uh, so uh, uh, we want some condition on like to, to look at the quiver and see whether it will be mutation finite or not. Okay, so this is the question. And uh, before, so you are looking when you have finitely many, finitely many quivers, right? Different quivers, finitely many different quivers. I don't have variables at all. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, so rules, uh, uh, we are not mutating in frozen variables and we are not putting arrows between frozen variables. So there are uh, some variations here, uh, but we are in very classical settings. Um, uh, we are not uh, putting- uh, But for frozen variables are defined, there are exactly those that do not mutate. It, it's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's- Tautological, almost condition. Uh, it's it's more or less tautological, yeah. It's uh, but uh, 
uh, absence of errors between frozen variables, it's sort of condition because there are some people who started to do this, like uh, uh, who, who started to change the rules and uh, still obtain some meaningful things. <laughs> no, re really, and apparently uh, they, uh, uh, some of them propose that probably uh, we could extend our results there, but it, it looks sort of difficult. So uh, what I'm said, trying to say is that we are very classical, like, uh, uh, we can also write this as a in a, in a matrix notation. So somehow I, I don't know how to uh, yeah, how how to use the pointer, but okay. Uh, so uh, in matrix notation we can uh, uh, have this black part which is mutable, and there are some uh, blue frozen variables which are unmutable. Uh, and the mutable part corresponds to square matrix B, and we have additional rows for one row for each unmutable frozen variable. So the BRJs are integers, or BRJs are all integers for us. Yes. If they're negative, they have different orientation. Uh, yes, uh, dependent on, on the orientation. So B is skew uh, for, for now is skew symmetric or maybe speed symmetrizable, and uh, this additional blue part is whatever. Uh, and now, now I cannot. Now, now I, it doesn't react at all. Yeah, it doesn't go at all. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in the next. So if you want to highlight, just yeah. Hold this down. Uh, no. And after, uh, I mean, it's exactly what I should not do if I don't want to stop it working. <laughs> okay. So I probably shouldn't highlight. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so I go back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, we can use uh, uh, we can uh, we can write this uh, 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 mutation rule uh, as in Fomin Zelivinsky uh, uh, this way. I, I mean, there are several versions, but this one is most useful for uh, this work. Uh, and a couple of uh, observations. So one observation is that uh, if the whole big thing is mut mutation finite. Produce fine climatic rivers, then the mutable part itself should be mutation finite. Because I just I can just forget this blue part and yeah. And uh, the second observation is that since my uh, frozen variables do, do not interact at all, I mean I can concentrate on one of them and formulate the rule, and then of course I will be able to have uh, as many as I want, but I, I just need to apply the same rule for all of them. So there is no need to in tracing uh, many simultaneously. Um, I just copied the observations. So what is the difference if there's a frozen one? By definition, it's frozen. So what changes? Uh, the only thing which is changes, which, uh, which is different, is that I am not able to poke it and mutate in this direction. This but means what changes for the for the black one? For the black one. Uh, for the black one, it doesn't change. It, it, it's my impossibility to change from 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 outside. Like I, I can mutate in the black, but I cannot mutate in blue, and then I'm restricted. And in theory, it can happen that I take uh, something something which was uh, there can be things which are uh, big quivers such that if I mutate where where I want, they are mutation infinite. But if I restrict myself to mutating only in the black part. I'm only having that many mutations. They may be mutation finite. I, I, in I theory. Don't, I don't understand the difference. Uh, yeah. if, if there's a blue dot or not. What, what is the difference? The difference is uh, I'm only allowed to mutate in black. I'm, I, I, I cannot. But the right, so I can just remove the blue, the blue one. So but no. The question, no. Uh, I don't understand the question anymore. Uh, <laughs> When I mutate, uh, when I mutate in uh, in black ones, uh, the uh, the arrows to the blue change. Mm -hmm. uh, so this 
uh, these errors uh, also change when I mutate in black ones. And it may happen that there are finitely many options for the black part, but uh, infinitely many for the blue, and then the whole thing is infin uh, mutation infinite. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that you also that freedom, so you know, mm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, yeah, let me introduce this notation, and maybe I will even copy it here because I mean it's a little bit different from uh, what is it is normally. I so this will be my uh, um, mutable part, and uh, I will denote by B I. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, the the number of errors from uh, from the frozen variable to the uh, mutable part. I mean, initially it was B I J, but I just removed one index because we only have one vertex. And why I fixed the notation? It is a little bit non-standard. Normally, you count the number of arrows coming to the uh, uh, to the frozen, uh, and we just started to compute it this way and decided not to redo. <laughs> so it's it's not, not nothing deep in this. Uh, okay, uh, and let me call this vector admissible uh, for the quiver Q if I can add this uh, such a frozen uh, vertex uh, and my uh, big quiver is still mutation finite. So that my uh, task will be to uh, describe all admissible vectors for every possible quiver Q. Okay. So I want to describe admissible vectors for every quiver Q, but notice that uh, uh, I only need to work these mutation finite quivers Q because if it was already mutation infinite, then of course uh, I have no chance. So no quiver, no vector will be admissible. Okay. Uh, now, uh, first result in this direction was already in Fermin Zelvinsky 4. Uh, namely, if you your quiver is of finite type, then every where uh, um, vector will be admissible. Moreover, uh, as I noticed that uh, finite type, uh, uh, okay, it's more or less the same as being mutation equivalent to some Dinkin diagram. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a result of Fomin and Levinsky. Uh, more, uh, moreover, uh, it turned out to be a characteristic property of finite types. So, uh, so uh, if uh, mutation finite is when you only look at the uh, quiver, you obtain finitely many quivers. And finite type is when you also look at variables. You you have finitely many seeds, and interiors are, for example, when you have a surface. On a trivial source surface, you have finitely many quivers, but infinitely many variables. You can uh, you can have the same combinatorics of your surface, but uh, there are infinitely many different uh, because there is mapping class group which uh, which can take your curve like to, to twist it more and more times. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. So in this setting, it is uh, every uh, uh, vector is admissible and uh, only in this case. And moreover, because it's two unders are equivalent because you have to mean your under it's equivalent to a thing and diagram. And for them, your under the number of variables are uh, it's the same thing. Or what? It's the same thing. Okay. It's the same thing. <laughs> We yeah. The same question, yeah. Different answers. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I tried to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> Good spot. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, um, uh, moreover, um, Ahmed Savan noticed that uh, 
if uh, your quiver with principal coefficients is mutation finite, then you can claim it, the quiver is of finite time already, and you don't need to. Uh, uh, yeah. And you don't need to uh, check. Uh, well, what does it mean, principal coefficient? Uh, more or less, like this is your matrix B and you, what you add additionally is just like this. And there's uh, everywhere else. Okay, uh, so uh, now I'm finally uh, ready to answer your question. What was the classification for the case when there were no frozen variables? So when, uh, all my, when you are allowed to, to mutate in uh, all possible directions uh, the answer uh, was given uh, in a joint paper with Misha Shapira and Pavel Tomarkin. Uh, I don't remember one. Uh, and we said that uh, uh, connected quiver is mutation finite, even only if I said it has, it came from a triangulated surface, or it is just of rank two, just two variables or it is mutation equivalent to one of 11 uh, quivers uh, written here. So uh, what is here? Uh, so three finite things, E6, E7, E8, then three affine things, E6, E7, E8 affine, then three extensions of these things. Like if I close one very, uh, vertex here, I get affine things, but here you, you, you just double uh, one vertex and get something a little bit bigger and two additional quivers, X6 and X7. So this was the uh, classification for, uh, this was the answer for the case when there were no mm, uh, frozen variables. And now our, uh, uh, you, you don't need to make copy. So my, my slides are on my web page. you can just, <laughs> Yeah, take from there. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, what we need to do now, we just need to go through all those possibilities for mutation finite quivers and see uh, what's going on. Uh, we are going to do it in a little bit different way. So uh, we will consider surfaces separately. And then uh, for these guys, we will separately look at finite, then affine, then everything else. This will cover. Uh, this line three and line two. I mean, uh, when you are right rank two, uh, when you have two vertices, you are also uh, as a finite or a fine or everything else. So, this is how we are going to practice it. And the finite case is already settled by Pamin and, and Zelivinsky. So, the answer is all ve uh, vectors are admissible. So, we just proceed now to surfaces. Uh, so, uh, let's consider a surface triangulated with. Uh, vertices at uh, uh, punctures and boundary uh, marked points. And we can construct a quiver by putting uh, vertices on the uh, edge of triangulations and uh, putting curls inside every triangle as it is drawn. And then uh, it is known that if I flip the triangulation, it will result exactly in mutating the quiver in the corresponding vertex. Now, uh, where are the frozen variables in this picture? Not, uh, they are not there, but it, uh, their place is known from the work of Fumin and Thurston uh, because they are represented by laminations uh, on the same surface. Lemin by lamination, uh, I mean, uh, they mean uh, a non intersecting set of curves. Uh, so you can have a closed curve, you can have a, a curve which goes from one boundary component to another or to the same boundary component. You can start on boundary component and spiral into a puncture, or you can go from one puncture to another. Uh, what you cannot do, you are not allowed to have, uh, you, you are not allowed to encircle empty space without any. Uh, uh, singularities or anything. So you, you, you cannot uh, take a curve which can be contracted on a, on a puncture or on a one boundary 
uh, point and you are not allowed to spiral out of uh, a puncture and then encircle nothing and go back to the same puncture. So you, you are not allowed to trace back backwards. Uh, if you uh, follow these rules, um, then there is a way to compute some something uh, called shear coordinates, which will be mutated in exactly the same way as um, uh, as these vectors do. So by, by exactly the same formula. Uh, by shear coordinates, we, uh, we mean the following. So uh, for every quadrilateral, I, I want to find the coordinate on this uh, uh, on this arc gamma. And if I see uh, a piece of lamination which is closing like from left to right, closing this gamma, I, I write plus one. And if it's closing from right to left, I write minus one. And if it is closing like here trivially, I don't, don't add anything. I just say it is zero. So let me show an example. So let me take the small surface and uh, yeah, I uh, when I have this lamination, let me compute. I have two arcs, gamma one and gamma two. So on gamma one, I have two uh, arcs crossing from uh, right to the left, which gives me minus one. So I get, get minus two. And this does not play because it is like something near the corner. It doesn't cross in, in a sufficient way. Um, and for gamma two, I have just one arc uh, crossing uh, essentially, and this does not fund, so I just get one. And in terms of uh, my B, B eyes, uh, uh, I will need to, to change the sign uh, because my, uh, my notation is not standard. So in a standard way, uh, one don't need to change the, the sign. Um, so the coordinates where so it's a stupid question perhaps so they point in type millers or, or just um so the correct type millers space or what with the shear coordinates yes yes so this actually ex explains uh, the cluster structure of the decorate type millers yes okay uh uh, uh, uh so uh Pamela and Thurston proved that this map uh, using these coordinates uh gives a bijection between laminations and the end so uh, I, I can write any vector and find some lamination uh, on the surface with uh, these coordinates uh, and on the other hand uh, yeah of course I get some something some integer vector um, and another statement is that uh, this uh, vectors which I obtained this way uh, are mutated exa in exactly the same way as uh, these lines here, um, which means that they can serve universally uh, by this uh, of or to represent these frozen uh, vertices. Because when I write some frozen vertex, some vector here, I can find some lamination and it will uh, mutate in the same way. Uh, what do I mean by mutate? I mean uh, when I want to, to do a mutation in direction I, I flip an arc of this triangulation, an arc a number I of this triangulation, and then these numbers will change. And they change in exactly the, sa the same way as the numbers here. So, I mean, it's probably, uh, if you never tried, it's not directly uh, immediate to see, but it's a, uh, there is the statement. Okay, so now, I think I'm ready to uh, state uh, uh, first result. Uh, so if, uh, given a quiver arising from triangulated surface, uh, I claim that admissible vectors correspond to exactly peripheral laminations on the same surface. By peripheral lamination, I mean something which I can uh, homotope to the boundary. So it may uh, have uh, closed curves like this, or we have uh, just uh, boundary curves from one boundary to another, uh, uh, from one uh, boundary point to another, but it should, um, it's possible to homotope it to the boundary. Uh, now, uh, a brief uh, word why. I mean, um, 
uh, what, uh, what is peripheral lamination? Peripheral lamination is something which is preserved by all the twists. Uh, and and it, uh, it is actually the same as pre being preserved by modular group. So when I change my surface by modular group, and nothing happens with this, to these laminations. And this means that uh, if I take my quiver and start to change my surface by modular group, I obtain uh, many copies of the same quiver uh, in the mutation tree. And if I take some random point on this mutation tree, uh, it, uh, it is actually in some ball of some constant radius M, you will always find a, a copy of quiver Q. And I mean, you are never, uh, never too far away from, from the initial, from the copy of initial quiver, which means that uh, in the end steps, you can you cannot produce infinitely many different possibilities. So, like this means that you are still mutation fine. Uh, so this is the idea for uh, the surface. Uh, let me try to give you an example. Let me to, let me take uh, a quiver uh, with just two. The vertices which, which corresponds to two triangles uh, glued into uh, the annulus. And then on this annulus, uh, I can draw only one uh, peripheral curve. So because I cannot draw anything like this, it will be, I just only have one vertex, I, it will be all connected to this vertex. So uh, the only possibility is the closed curve. And I can compute the numbers on the uh, arcs one and two, and I will find out that I get plus and minus one. And if I will uh, put it back to the quiver, I get, uh, I mean, uh, why I'm not right, I'm writing A there and not one and minus one is uh, because I could take several, uh, several, like any integer number of these curves. So I can have any integer number uh, in coming from two to to the uh, uh, frozen variable and the same number outgoing, and this I will uh, uh, call annulus property. So two minutes, yeah, uh, because I, I I think I I started later, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and this is also characteristic. This analysis property actually a characteristic property of affine quiver, uh, uh, namely if you take an uh, so if you take an affine quiver containing a double edge, then uh, a double error, then uh, uh, a vector is admissible if and only if it satisfies this property. Now. Uh, it's not restrictive uh, to look on lead quivers with double arrows because uh, in the mutation class, in every affine mutation class, there is a representative with double arrows. And uh, they, working with these representatives, one can compute modular group, cluster modular group, uh, applying a recent result by Kaufman and Greenberg, and then do exactly the same as what we did with surfaces like. Uh, taking the generators and saying that uh, they uh, preserve analysis property. Uh, now, everything else, what happens for uh, all quivers which are not finite and not affine? There are no admissible vectors at all because, and, and uh, the analysis property is also uh, 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 the reason for that, because if we start, we are, we are just able to build the mutation sequence, which uh, for, uh, such that if in initial quiver uh, the annals property worked, then at the end it will be broken. Uh, now, finally, I can uh, formulate more explicitly for surfaces if, if I look at special representative or a special triangulation of, of the surface, I can uh, claim that a quiver is admissible if and only if it doesn't connect to the red part, it doesn't cross the red part at all, and uh, uh, unless property is satisfied for everything in this green part, 
and there is additional uh, condition for, uh, for for the outside uh, boundary. Uh, and we are able to extend everything to skew symmetrizable case. I will not stop here. So there are little changes. We one need to speak about arbifolds instead of surfaces and diagrams instead of quivers and the annulus property will come with weights. And one can use unfolding to simplify the computations. And finally, uh, uh, when I gave this talk in Newton Institute, Famine asked me, uh, whether I mean I I'm always rel uh, relating to analyst property and, and he said maybe this is uh, this is the final answer and it is the final answer is that the quiver is uh, uh, mutation finite uh, if and only if the analyst property holds for every uh, quiver in, in in the mutation class and for every double error. Uh, and one more color from this is that uh, equivalent mutation mutation finite if for every if and only for every rank three sub quiver uh, of any quiver in the uh, uh, in the mutation class it is mutation finite and this is what I want to say. Thank you. <laughs> Questions. Questions in person. Yeah. What was the analog property again? So here it is. Yeah, if you see a double arrow, you have uh, uh, your arc, your your, uh, your, uh, your uh, frozen variable has the same number of incoming and the same uh, and outgoing arrows, and they are oriented like. If they make oriented triangle. And for every double arrow or, or only it, those connected to blue? For for every double arrow, and this A can be zero. So but it's it should be the same. Okay. Well, let's thank speaker again. after lunch at two o'clock. The lunch is here. <laughs> oh, <skinny box>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.